Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the debut episode of Maze Treatments Season 1 featuring Haunt Personalities. I am one of your judges. My name is Anthony. With me, as always, are my two trusty companions, man. My rider dies, the homies, the other two judges. We got Logan. We got Sammy. You guys ready to freaking see who can design the best maze treatment? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Let's do this, bro. They man. already have a high bar because we already killed the game um, <laughs> in the pilot, bro. So we already killed the game, man. We had, we had some good ones in the I pilot. I would like to see any of you pop my Twilight Zone. Dude, I don't know if anyone could beat that Twilight Zone concept, dude. <laughs> no, it's the Halloween maze, bro. The Halloween maze was the best maze. Halloween was pretty lit too, man. We had some. Good I feel like I was in the movie again, bro. Right, <laughs> taking you freaking scene to scene. So here's our bracket right here. The maze tournament uh, is going to start us off with this episode. It's going to be, of course, the Hauntline versus TLEV's Mr. E. And then in the following weeks, you're going to see other haunt personalities such as Lost TV versus SoCal Exploring, Eddie Tainment versus TLEV's Josue, Zombie Chris versus TLEV's Thomas, and Tormented Society's Jinx the Fool versus Connor Florida. So the next coming weeks, you're going to be seeing... Go for it. I have a question here, and I, I probably should have asked this, you know, way earlier. Will Jinx do it in costume? That would be interesting, Jinx. If you're watching, you've got a decision to make in the next coming weeks because you're one of the last ones out there. So uh, the the pressure's on him, man. The pressure's on him. Is Jinx gonna get in costume and, and do it? Is Jinx the fool gonna speak for once? We'll see. All right. Only time will tell. Um, going over the rules, uh, of course. Every treatment has to include a facade, a first room, a transition room, money shot room, a final room, last scare, uh, and then they got to include what scare actors they're going to be using. Uh, and if it's a Halloween Horror Nights related maze, uh, a Twitter password uh, or who's going to be giving out that password at the event. That rule only applies to HHN. Um, so without further ado... We are going to get started with our very first episode, our very first uh, 1v1 right now, which is The Haunt Lines, Jonathan versus TLEV Whore slash Media's Mr. E. So, Mr. E gave us Spirits and Demons of the East. Let's see what treatment he has for Spirits and Demons of the East. So all right, everyone at the Knights of Horror over there. I see you guys. This is Mr. E from TLV Media slash TLV Horror. And I'll be talking about a certain maze today. Well, this maze is something I wish that comes to HHN for sure. And that is Spirits and Demons from the East. Now, I could have just done that, but also I want to add it a little bit. Music by Baby Metal. Okay, now I hope you guys know who Baby Metal is. If you don't, this would suck. Um, so here we go. We're going to talk about the facade at first. Now, I really want to focus on Lunar New Year. So, this facade is going to be a Chinese calendar. Okay, it's going to be like a, a postcard. With the symbols of the Lunar New Year animals, but a little devilish. So, you know, it's going to kind of be like uh, when you went to Holidays in Hell. Alright, first room. Here we go. This is the first room. Got the paper lanterns. You guys know those red lanterns. If you go down to Chinatown on Lunar New Year's, the paper lanterns. Okay, so there's a celebration basically happening for the 2020 Lunar New Year's. And who do we see there? Well... We see the little girl that was in the scare zone of uh, Spirits and Demons from the East. Some people call her Little Momo, but I looked up the name, and it's just Schoolgirl. So we see her. She's celebrating, and she's scaring you. It's really scary. At the same time, there's some baby metal playing. They're going to make their own music for this maze, so be ready for that. Now the transition rooms. Let's talk about it. Each transition room will be a postcard like Holidays in Hell. Thing is, with these postcards is, the scare actors will be popping out of the postcards. So, example, we'll be entering the year of the dragon. Boom, you see the demented dragon popping out. All right? So the money shot room. Now this idea, I'm not going to lie, I got this from Thomas and my fellow girlfriend. <laughs> um, it is the calendar, 
okay, is in the middle of the room. You're walking around it. It's like a wheel of fortune kind of thing. So it spins, it spins automatically, and it lands on an animal. That animal then pops out, that scare actor. There's like five of them that pop out, and they rush you. That's some scary stuff. At the same time, when it drops on that animal, the music just gets hardcore baby metal, okay? That's what happens, all right, ladies and gentlemen? Now, here we go. I'm gonna talk about some certain rooms. Some certain rooms, okay? I wanted to, I wanted to focus on uh, four of the main uh, Lunar New Year animals. Uh, actually, no, more than four. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five, okay? So we're gonna start with the snake room, okay? Now, this, the snake is, I don't know what the years are, but when after you go by, by the postcard, you're gonna enter a reptile store that is in ruins. You don't understand why, but that's because you got the snake samurai. So you remember the samurai that the um, devil samurai that we see in uh, Spirits and Demons from the East was that, except it's got like a reptilian face, like a snake. Now I also wanted to add a room to this scene, uh, like, like when you're moving on to the next room, and that's a dark room where you just hear some slithering and you feel stuff touching you like what happened in uh, Creep Show. So that's what's gonna be happening. The next room is gonna have a pig, rabbit, and rooster. It's gonna be a, I don't know exactly what food house I wanna do, but we're gonna say sushi house for now. We got a chef pig, a chef rabbit, and a chef rooster. And what is the sushi made out of? Well, it's made out of human. So you got a human wrap that you'd be eating, a California wrap, if you may say. Um, and it, it's pretty gross. It stinks in there, you know? I hope smells come back kind of thing. And then we got the dragon room. Now, this one I had to put because I am the year of the dragon. So, dragon lantern dance is happening. You know, those people who dance underneath the, you know, the dragon. Well, underneath them, though, are characters that look like demented dragons. And who are they led by? None other than Crackhead himself. We all love Crackhead. You, I know you guys remember him. He's leading the group. They all jump out of this little dancing dragon. Baby Metal's going hardcore right now, and then they're jumping out. So let's talk about the final room really quickly. Now we're going back to the exact same town we saw last time, but now it's in ruins. You hear rats running around because this is the year of the rats. So I'm just saying this, this is the maze that's coming this year, okay? So it's the year of the rats. So you hear them running around and you got demented rats that look like the ones from Exterminators, if you remember that scare zone, running at you, jumping out from the corners and all that stuff. So then we enter the last scare, which is a four-way scare with a dragon, a pig, a rat, and a snake at the end, of course. And then, of course, because I love scare zones, you enter a scare zone. You see all the other animals I didn't talk about. So that's an ox, a tiger, a monkey, a goat, horse, dog. All of those are like demented forms. So there we go. Now, I know you said for HHN there's got to be Twitter passwords. So I couldn't think of anything other than, I mean, nothing's going to beat my Skrillex uh, Twitter password. But we're going to have the band Baby Metal in the front. And the password's going to be... Give me chocolate because that's their main song. So you're gonna go up to them, you're gonna whisper in their ears, you're gonna say, Give me chocolate. And what they're gonna give you? A band t shirt. There we go. That is my maze. Baby metal. He got me a baby metal. Um, I just hope people other than the three of us and maybe him knows who baby metal is at the event. I mean, I hope people know who baby metal are. Right. Um, but that would be awesome. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, especially uh, the whole Twitter password thing. It'd be hilarious. Uh, yeah. It might confuse some people who don't know who the fuck Baby Metal is, but I love it personally. Um, I, I think uh, he's got a good idea on a facade. I, I was kind of getting uh, kind of a mix in my head of of like the Shadowlands maze that was at uh, at Knotts, but with the holidays and hell kind of a vibe to it. I don't know. That's just kind of how I pictured it in my head. Right. I, no, I, I agree. How about you guys? <laughs> Uh, I thought it was really. I thought it was a very interesting choice uh, he made um, with the Chinese New Year using the Lunar New Year. Um, the one thing I would say that that he may have done a little wrong culturally was placing it in a Japanese restaurant at one point, uh, <laughs> just because you're either going Chinese or you're going Japanese. I guess it's Spirits of Demons of the East, so you got to combine a little bit of both, right? Uh, and I think Baby Metal's Japanese as well, so he's he's really integrating different cultures there. Um, so that was the, that was the the one the one the one critique I would have, but it seemed like it'd be a lot of fun. Um, right. Baby metal blaring through there um, will really get the blood flowing for people, um, and I think he really presented some really cool scare opportunities, especially that last scare. 
um, with like all four of them coming at you, um, and then really going into the rest of it, you know, as they've done with that maze previously, where it kind of leads into a scare zone, right. um, and then using the other um, animals on the calendar to scare there. So I thought that was really cool. The the human sushi rolls is really cool, um, and then the the dragon too. I I can really picture that. Like you have to like navigate around the dragon and like that provides great opportunities for them to like jump out behind the dragon and stuff like that. Yeah, agreed. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go based on because I, I just tallied up. I, I did. I basically scored him already in a way um, of what I thought at least. Um, so the calendar postcard, very uh, good idea. Um, however, I think what gave it, I gave it a four out of five because it's something we've kind of already seen with holidays in hell. But I still like the concept that it's a, it's a different type of, uh, uh, like, a new layover. You know what I mean? It's a new theme. So that's what kind of saved it, and that's what kind of gave it its points. Um, the paper lanterns and all that is another uh, – I gave that a four as well for the first room. Um, I like the idea of Momo celebrating and stuff, which is really cool. Um, and I like the whole idea of her dancing around and then bringing that character back, which is a very terrifying character. Uh, transition rooms, I'm going to give a good solid five because I do like the fact that they actually have characters popping out of the postcards. You don't see that a lot. I think they did that a little bit for um, Creep Show last year, which uh, w- uh, which I thought really, really kept the maze flowing in, in a way. So that's why I'm giving that a five. I do like it when they come out when you just think it's a visual and then they come out. Um, I'm loving that money shot room, man. Uh, the whole Wheel of Fortune type thing where if something lands on something um, – you know, it, it's really cool to see uh, to see that you know, like so you know, whatever it lands on, that character pops out. So it, it's kind of it's kind of like something that's almost different every time you walk through. If you get something else, you know what I mean, which I thought was a really interesting idea. So I would love to see how that would play out uh, as well. Um, the different rooms he gave us: reptile room, the dark room, the sushi room, the dragon room. Like I think that's an amazing concept to add to this. Um, to this to this maze already to really bring out all the cultures of, of the Chinese New Year and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, so I think that's really cool. And I, and I really have to say I did like how he took Spirits and Demons of the East and based it around Chinese New Year, which I thought was really cool. Um, because, you know, what we were given of the Scare Zone, it was just a bunch of stuff that was brought over from the East. And it was all kind of like curse possessed and stuff. So to, for him to base it around a holiday, which is really pretty cool, it's really kind of cool. Um, so that was really cool. That final room with the you know the weird rats and all that I think is a really cool idea. I think that could be a very good scare. Uh, the last scare with the dragon pig, rat, and snake. I'm going to give that one a three, honestly, because um, it's something that you do see all the time at Horror Nights um, with that final scare as far as who's coming out of where. They did that. A perfect example of that was in Titans of Terror. They did that. Um, so that one's going to get about a three for me. Uh, the scare zone idea, though, I mean, that's always, if he's, what he's talking about, sounds like he's doing uh, Persian Courtyard, so I'm assuming that's where it's going to go out for the scare zone. Um, give that one a four, because uh, scare zone is a common thing for there, but I would love to see what that can that can look like. Um, of course, the Twitter password gives an extra, I, I, that's got that's got the extra points right there, because give me chocolate, that's just hilarious, dude. Uh, overall, Spirits and Demons of the East, music by Baby Metal, total points for me. I think it. What was it out of like forty-five or fifty? I believe. Or do you remember? It was. Uh, well, how many category? How many categories is it supposed to be? I don't remember. Okay. It's like seven or eight, isn't there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven total. So that's thirty-five, and then plus the five extra bonus points. Yeah. Which brought him to a. For me, it brought him to a thirty-one. So. Nice. That's that's over me at least. I don't know what you guys think. I don't know if you guys will. I guess we'll tally it up at the end uh, and give it the official score. Um, now to move on to Jonathan from the hotline. And this one caught me off guard a little bit. <laughs> I'm curious to see how he's going to bring this to life. Originally, he had one maze planned, and then he changed it the week before. And, I, and I'm curious to see what this, is, what this one's going to look like. Here's Jonathan from the hotline giving us a maze treatment based around the Matrix. Let's check it out. Hey guys, first of all, I want to say thank you for allowing me to uh, be part of this. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's uh, it's great to stretch these creative muscles because I think uh, all of us, all of us haunt fans, have a a little designer in us <laughs> waiting to break free. So this is a lot of fun. So thank you for allowing me to be part of this today. Uh, so with that, uh, my round one pick 
for the maze treatment tournament is the matrix now i want to apologize ahead of time because i've got my cues on my ipad so i'm going to be reading off of it a lot so if we break contact I'm sorry. Now, I know this is not a traditional horror maze, uh, but it is pretty scary because if you think about it in the movie, right? If you're not being chased by one of those mechanical sentinels, those killing death machines, uh, you're being chased by the stone cold agents like Agent Smith. So either you either got an agent coming after you or you've got a sentinel coming after you. That's terrifying to me. And also, thanks to John Cook, uh, I'm a big fan of maze stunts now. If we can throw a stunt in a maze, Let's do it. And a maze based off of the Matrix is definitely perfect for a whole slew of maze stunts. So here is my pitch for a maze based off of the Matrix. Now this, uh, I think this maze would probably work best in a sound stage or in a warehouse, but I could totally see it happening in a tent too. And it starts with the facade. The facade is a giant LED wall that has the Matrix code sprinkling down on it so it's just this giant i want it to be huge too i would want it to be uh think about the height of the ghostbusters firehouse set from last year about that tall and very wide huge led wall with the matrix code raining down on it and you know kind of setting the mood on the outside by playing bits of the score as guests wait in line so then guests would enter the first room which would be a giant square easily at least two stories tall a giant square of a room all led walls i'm talking led ceiling led wall led floor the entire thing is led walls and this will enable the room to switch between settings constantly between the white void known as the construct the post-apocalyptic desert of the real and the abandoned room where morpheus offers neo the pills now this room would be dressed just like it was in the construct with two fancy armchairs and an old tv and in the center of them all there would be a performer dressed as morpheus warning guests that no one can be told what the matrix is you have to see it for yourself and he would offer guests the choice of the red pill or the blue pill. So after that, the guests would exit this room and they would enter the first transitional hallway of the maze. And this one would be a pretty long hallway and it would also kind of go from a wider sized hallway to a more uh, narrow slash normal sized hallway. Essentially, it would funnel guests through this area, right? And this room would be also comprised entirely of LED walls and it would propel guests into the matrix using surround sound and a green spinning gobo light effect to really sell the point that they are going into the matrix. So that would lead guests to the second room, which would replicate Trinity's famous slow-mo kick. This room would require two stunt performers on wires, one to perform the slow-mo kick itself, and another one who would fall victim to the kick, and they would uh, perform a pool stunt into the wall. And upon impact, air cannons would activate and that would simulate kind of like a shockwave of the uh, the police officer hitting the wall and it would also scare guests as they walk by guests would then go from that room into another transitional hallway uh, and this one would be dressed to, to look like an abandoned building thankfully a lot of the matrix takes place in abandoned buildings <laughs> so there's a lot of like decrepit hallways to choose from so this one would take place in one of those hallways and at the end of the hallway there would be a pepper's ghost effect that would use projection to have a black cat cross and then glitch replicating the uh, deja vu scene from the movie at this time intense music would start playing and guests would hear trinity warn them that deja vu is usually a glitch in the matrix it's what happens when they change something and this transitional hallway would include two scares one from an agent and another from a SWAT officer, both of which come through doors with uh, air cannons going off. So from there, guests would exit the building via an emergency exit and then enter an area made to look like uh, a train station's turnstiles, which would lead guests into the money shot room, which is a replica of the subway station fight between Neo and Agent Smith with two performers rigged up to do the spinning slow-mo shootout. 
The slow-mo portion of the shootout would include wind, air cannons, strobe lights, and surround sound to really immerse the guest in the moment. So guests would actually walk around this, this stunt, and uh, as they walk around it, they'd be getting scared by agents popping out from behind pillars and even transforming into pedestrians like it happens in the movie, except here it would be done with uh, double-sided costumes. So an agent would spin around from being a pedestrian, he would spin around and reveal that he is in fact an agent. So guests would walk through this room and then on the opposite side of the room, they would exit the train station by walking into and through a phone booth with a ringing telephone. So this would lead guests into another transitional hallway like the first one made to look like the Matrix and it transports guests from the Matrix into the final room, which the entire final portion of this maze would take place on the Nebuchadnezzar in the real world. Guests enter one of the ship's corridors. Suspenseful music plays, alarms ring, and sentinel claws come through the cracks in the pipes. The sentinels are starting to break into the ship. Guests then walk by the ship's bridge. Tank is at the controls. He's panicking a little bit. We hear Morpheus say over the radio, Tank, arm the EMP. And suddenly, a sentinel comes crashing through a cutout portion of the ceiling, scaring guests from above right in front of the ship's bridge. And the final scares happen down a hallway. It's a barrage of three consecutive sentinel puppet scares giant sentinel puppet scares. They come out from behind pipes, scaring guests on either side of the ship's corridor until they get to the end of the hallway right before they exit the maze. They hear Trinity scream, no! And it's followed by an explosive electrical sound of the EMP activating, and thus ends the Matrix. So I tried my best to explain uh, my vision. Uh, I actually took out a lot too because uh, there was a lot of other ideas that I had, but I wanted to keep it short just to not keep you guys sitting there for uh, too long. So uh, have mercy. I hope this pleases the uh, the maze gods, and uh, I'll see you around. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was uh, quite the pitch, man. <laughs> I have to say, the Matrix sold me, dude. I want to see that as a maze. I, I, I got I to gotta hear you guys' thoughts about this first. Uh, Go ahead, one of you guys. I don't know, man. Tons but, to say. I'll, I'll go first. I think um, the hotline really brought it today um, and really showed a, a really great concept of a maze of something that we were all a bit confused by when we heard initially, you're going to do what? Yeah. The Matrix? Okay. You're going to have to prove us now. Yeah. Um, and I think he did a really good job of really – Selling what he wanted to, to do here, uh, yeah. you know, everyone's very familiar with the Matrix code. I really enjoyed how in the background, even when he was shooting, he had the Matrix code flowing in right? the back. That was um, just like a that was like a great little touch for a little Easter egg. Yeah, although I, I really do like uh, the office pillow a lot that uh, Tim brought. Oh, right, Adams. you can't you can't you can't compete <laughs> with off or prison mic, dude. It's just it's that. Yeah, it's yeah, that very game. iconic. But uh, the Matrix code was there. Uh, each room, I think, flowed well into the other, right. um, you know, from the facade into the next room where that intro room and you're sitting with Morpheus and right. as you as you go down hallways and really just using. I, I, I think what I enjoyed most was that there wasn't wasted space in this pitch. Like right. everywhere you went had a purpose and really flowed its way into the next room as you exactly. made your way all the way to the exit. Um, and so I really enjoyed that. And he made something that. Like, ideally, is not a horror movie. I mean, it does have, you know, sci-fi It's more of a concept, thriller but... kind of action yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, thriller action movie. But made it made it so, like, there was scariness. I, like, one thing I would add is, like, in the room where he has the agents dressed as civilians, I really think that's an opportunity to use one of Horror Night's iconic moves of, like, dummies. Yeah. Um, and so you don't know which is real and which is not. Then when they turn around just... on you, it's like a boom. Yeah, so that would really amplify the scare just slightly. That's the only thing I would add. I mean, yeah. Bon, bon appetit is what I bon would appetit. say. Logan, what's your thoughts, man? I am so conflicted because I don't want this to work, but it works so damn well. <laughs> I hate it and I fucking love it at the same time. Um, <laughs> and, and I love the Matrix, but like I was like, there's no way like he's gonna be able to pull this off. Like, like you might as well make like a, I mean, it's nowhere near the same movie, but like I don't want a fucking diehard maze. Uh, <laughs> but if that, but, it, but if that's pitched well, you never know. Like yeah. it, 
I would, I don't know, man. I, I, I think the way he edited this video really sold me because I really got to see his vision. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, Sammy had mentioned um, that it, it might be a little too expensive, so I'd really like to see how they could work that out. But honestly, like I, I'm a hundred percent for this now. I, 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 I don't <laughs> like that I'm a hundred percent for this. Like I'm so, I'm so much inner conflict going on right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. But I'm just definitely gonna say that that one's my vote. Um, how about, how about you, Anthony? All right, man. So the Matrix, man. I, I, I'm a fan of this trilogy. Earlier this year, I actually revisited the trilogy because I had caught news that they were making a Matrix Four. Um, so I was like, I want to revisit the trilogy. You know, it, it's a good trilogy. I think the movies are very underrated. I mean, it's. I mean, they're well known. Don't get me wrong, but I think like as far as what they designed for the time that came out in like the early 2000s was phenomenal. Um, no questions asked. Um, so when I when I heard that Jonathan was going to make a maze based around this, I was like. About the only scare I can see is the fucking agents. That's it. But I forgot all about the Sentinels. Um, so let, let me let, – I'll just break it down for you. Facade, giant LED wall, Matrix code, the score playing in the background. Matrix has a great score to it. And to hear that and kind of you know see that screen um, and then every now and then maybe just pop up the letters, the Matrix, you know, to, to kind of give you that idea of what you're doing. I think it's phenomenal. A uh, great idea for the facade, uh, especially with uh, with the past being, uh, you know, mazes that took place on a soundstage. The facade was mostly just a blank wall, uh, not much. I mean, last year, Stranger Things, they had a projection of, um, you know, the, the intro card for Stranger Things 2, but that was it. First room, I, I think it's cool with the giant square and the LED screens, of course, switching through the different scenes of the movie. I think that's a freaking awesome idea. That would be really cool. Um, and I wouldn't put it past Horror Nights because they've had they've used projections in the past, um, especially the scene where they did um, last year's Stranger Things. They used the projection when Will looked outside to the um, upside down and saw the mind flare, which I thought was really cool. Um, so I wouldn't put it past Horror Nights to try to accomplish that. The transition rooms I think are cool. The long narrow walls transporting guests into the Matrix I think is an, an amazing way to really bring that and and really you know immerse the audience into the to the maze, which I think is awesome. The second room, Trinity's famous kick in slow-mo. I would love to see how they can pull that off. Um, and I love how he's pulling stuff out of the cookbook, as me and Sammy call it, of, of stunts and mazes. That's, uh, that yeah, is, the cookbook, that, bro. That, that is you gotta, definitely a, gotta dive a cook... In. You gotta, you gotta put a, little, put a little, little recipe from the cookbook in there, man. It's good. Um, transition rooms, I think, too, with the abandoned buildings and, and of course, the Pepper's ghost effect, which I think was awesome. Um, of the of the cat glitching, if they can pull that off, like that'd be just like something trippy, you know. I mean, and I and I really think they can do a good job on that. Um, I think the money shot scene, of course, taking place in the subway, walking through that fight scene, and other agents coming out would be really cool. Um, I, I'm assuming, of course, this is based around the first Matrix movie, because if it was the, the 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 second Matrix movie, I would love to see the fight scene, of course, with him and all the other Agent Smiths, which was an iconic scene, but. Being that this is based off the first one, which is still awesome, is really cool. I, I like the idea of the agents getting the scares, you know, turning around when they're civilians and then turning around and then their other half of the costume is them as agents. That's a freaking genius idea. And I agree with Sammy. Mannequins could expand that to get more scares because people wouldn't know which is real and which isn't. They're really famous for doing that as well. Um, the phone booth transition, that I think that's the one that got me a lot. Uh, what would be cool is as you're walking through that phone booth, you know, you just hear the ring and then you walk through and you're out into the real world, which I think is awesome. Um, and I do love, of course, the Sentinels coming through, the ship cutting through it. You're hearing Morbius' audio in the background, like trying to fire the EMP, and the Sentinels are popping out at the very last minute, and then I think what would be cool is a, a nice flash of the EMP, and it just ends the maze right there. So, Jonathan, well done, man. That was a freaking fantastic pitch, man. Yeah, that's a round of applause right there. That's, that is a... That deserves a round of applause right there, man. <laughs> Fuck, man. That that really he got a he got a salute too, man. Like it tells you a lot. Uh all right, gentlemen. Final verdict. Uh go ahead, Sammy. Um, uh, I love you, Tim. But uh the hotline you, you took it today, buddy. He took it. Round one for, for Sammy, the hotline. Logan. Go on the hotline, man. I didn't think it was gonna be that way, but I am shocked. <laughs> I am also shocked, Tim. 
thank you so much for participating in this. But Hotline, you're going to be advancing to the next round, my friend. That was an amazing pitch, and I can't wait to see what other mazes you pitch for us uh, come time next round, dude. So, yeah, wow, Hotline took the took the victory for round for that round one, man. That was great. That was great. This is fun, guys. I love this. Like. I love looking at what, how creative people can get. Like, I can't wait to see the rest of these mazes throughout the rest of the, the season, man. So stay tuned next week for a new episode of Maze Treatments where we have Adrian from Lost TV versus Scott from SoCal Exploring. It's going to be another fun uh, matchup. Can't wait to see what the two come up with as far as this maze treatment goes. Uh, and, yeah, Jonathan, I can't wait to see what you come up with in the next round, man. Uh, very excited. Uh, if you guys – enjoyed mace treatments please hit that like button and leave some comments below to show your support for the show um and we just launched a new mace treatment t-shirt uh with all the contestants on the back um and if you guys want to show your support and represent the first season of mace treatments that is on our store right now which is the links in the bio right there so go go get it go, go yourself a mace treatment shirt man spread the word out there spread the fun word you know we gotta we gotta rep that merch like also, I, yeah, I like that East versus West shirt they told you today. East versus West, which is also available on the store. Stickers, women's t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, tank tops. You name, you name it. it. You have it. Uh, I'm excited for next week. I can't wait. Uh, follow us on social media, at Nights of Horror on, on, on Twitter. I just busted a Sammy right now. And yeah, I'm not, not the only one. On Instagram. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy this series. We will see you guys next week.